Bongiorno. Um, so I'm getting a lot of private messages and emails about how to do the EMG circuit that I showed. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's just a video of me flexing my arm and uh, it turns a light on whenever I flex my arm. Uh, really easy to make. Um, there's certain design parameters I think y'all are asking about, but I'm just going to go over how to make EKG or an EEG circuit uh, or an EMG circuit. They're pretty much the same. You just filter differently. Um, and that way you can stop emailing me and just watch this video and thumbs it up and comment. Um, cause it, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to first show the basic, how you make any kind of circuit and then I'll show some details. All right. So there's three stages. To, oh, I'm gonna run out of room, but there's three stages to like in any any circuit that takes electrical signals from the body and um, uses it or makes an analog signal from it. Um, then you filter. So first we amplify it, um, then we filter it, and we amplify it again. Pretty easy. So I could end the video here, but I'm going to give you some more details. Um, so let's make like an EMG circuit. Um, so for EMG or any any kind of circuit, you want your preamp to not draw current from the body um, because your body is high impedance. Um, so we want this to have a high input impedance so it doesn't draw current from the body. Um, and to do that they use something called an instrumentation op amp. You've probably heard of it um, or seen it. I'm going to use what I typically use and that's the INA 118. <clears throat> So, this is the INA-118 um, I think you'll oftentimes see a P there. That, that might just be um, the kind of package. Uh, it has two inputs. There's a positive, a negative input. Um, then you have your VDD. You have VSS, and then you have a reference pin. Okay, so that's our, so if we're doing EMG, let's say we have, oh, you can't see that. Let's say we have someone's arm here. He's pretty jacked. Let's say you have an electrode here, an electrode here. There's, where we want to know the difference between, the voltage difference between those two electrodes. That's basically what EMG is. So, and you, I might have the orientation wrong. Um, like which one's negative, which one's positive. You can just flip it around and see which one works better. Actually, it should really do the same thing. Um, all right, so that's our input. Then we go to the filter stage. Um, two ways you can filter. You can use passive filters or you can use active filters. Passive filters are things that are just resistors and capacitors. Um, so this would be V in, this would be V out. Basically, you play with this ratio to know um, how much how much AC voltage is going to make it across, and it's frequency dependent. So uh, I'm not really going to go over that because. We don't really use passive filters um, for this kind of stuff. The other way to filter is active filters. That's where you have an op amp. And I like to use Salen key second order op amps. And you can second order filters. And you can string these together if you want to make your cutoff better. So this is, I'm going to just write the first one. Um, let's see. Uh, yes. 
and you can look online and see um, the the basic format for this. But this is a I think it's sailing key, or or else it's multiple feedback. It's one of these, but I use this all the time. This one's a low pass. Um, if you want to change it to a high pass, so you're gonna have a high pass and a low pass. So we're gonna have this guy low pass feeding into a high pass. And I'm I'm not putting any values because you can just look it up and, and select your cutoff frequency for whatever application. Um, I'm gonna run out of room. Uh. All right, that uh, that is a high pass. So it's going to take out all of the low frequencies. This one's taking out all the high frequencies. Um, again, you select the cutoff frequencies with these capacitors and resistors, their values. You can look up online like a, a basic calculator that you just plug in value, or you plug in like your cutoff frequency and, and it'll do it for you. Um, I use TI's design, Filter Design Pro. It, it does this stuff like in a second um, and saves you a lot of time. Um, so now we've we've done a preamp. Oh, actually, so I'm missing two pins on the preamp, um, and that's just the gain pins. Um, so the gain, how much you're? Oh, you can't see that. <laughs> uh, you see that? Yeah, you can see that. So basically, there's some resistor that tells you how much your gain is. Um, so we've already we've amplified it, some initial amplification, not too much because there's a bunch of noise. We don't want to amplify the noise too much, and we filter out the noise with these two um, stages: low pass, high pass, um, and the last stage is just a non-inverting op-amp circuit. So. This is just the final amplification. Okay. So I think everyone can understand this part pretty easily. This The thing that gets people caught up is when you go trying to make a single supply, um, uh, EKG or EMG circuit. Here I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna redraw this in a different way. Okay, so let's say we only have one battery. Um, there's two ways you can you can do this. Uh, one, you could get two batteries, and then um, you know your op amp has a VSS. It wants a negative voltage and a positive voltage from where it's going to swing the amplification. Um, and this is in all our filters, this is our instrumentation, op amp, and the final stage. They're all, they have a VSS and VDD. So you can supply a VSS, like have two batteries, supply a, a negative voltage here and a positive voltage here. Or you can, um, you can use one battery and use a negative voltage inverter. I've had a lot of problems with that. I, I've read some other people have problems with it. I think what it is, is if you're using an inverter, make sure the output's regulated, or else it'll, it'll mess up your circuit a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, the other way, which I think is the best way of doing it, is, let's say we have our INA 118, Okay, um, that's our instrumentation op amp or the preamp. It has this VSS. Let's ground the VSS. Let's not ground the VSS. Sorry. Yes, let's ground the VSS. Um, 
because we're single supply, we don't have a negative voltage. Um, this is our VDD. Let's take it to like five volts. You can do three volts um, for like low voltage application applications. Um, and let's say this is the important part: the reference pin. Um, you can use a voltage divider, or you can use some other tricks. Voltage divider is kind of inefficient, um, but that's what I'm doing right now for my circuits, just because it's really easy. Um, so for this, we're using five volts. Um, so let's make these equal resistors. So now the reference pin is going to be at 2.5 volts. So what would we have coming out of this? If this is our output, let's graph. Um, this is 5 volts. This is 0 volts. And say this is 2.5 volts. So now our signal's going to be centered, our EMG signal, which, you know, is going to be crazy, will be centered around 2.5 volts. Here's where a lot of people make a mistake, is that they continue to um, use that reference for the rest of their circuit. Uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, this is getting kind of long, but here, here's the filters. The filters have a VSS for all the op amps. They also have ground just in the components, like in the circuit themselves. You know, we have our op amp here. This is, let's say, a low pass filter. Um, so that ground here that the cap's tied to, we'll call that the ground of the filter. And VDD here. Not sure if you can see this. Yeah, okay, 5 volts. So here's what a lot of people do. They they say VSS on their filters, let's ground it, and the ground let's put to 2.5 volts. And that doesn't give you good results. Um, just ground your ground and ground your VSS. The thing that that's going to probably happen is that it's going to concatenate your negative signals. Um, so you might have to play around with some tricks with your high-pass filter so that you don't take out all the DC. That's kind of not the best way to do it, but um, there's other ways to do it. If you really care about the negative part of your signal, um, maybe you should do uh, like a passive filter in that case um, after the instrumentation op amp. Because this is centered around 2.5 volts, now this is going to take this and after you've applied a high pass filter, it's going to take it down to, um, if we're plotting this 0 volt, 5 volt, if you filter it enough, it's going to be centered around 0. What oftentimes is the case is because your high pass filter isn't an ideal cutoff, you're going to have it centered around here, like 0 0.2 volts. So you still get your negative voltage. Um, I hope that was what y'all are wanting to know. Um, this is what I recommend. Don't use two batteries. Don't use negative voltage inverters. Just simply use a voltage divider tied to the reference and then your, the rest of your circuit, make it a single supply circuit. Tie ground to ground, VSS to ground. Um, and you should be good. Let me know if you have questions by commenting on the video instead of emailing me. Thanks. Ciao.